Before we get to today's video topic, I wanted to say thank you to NordVPN for sponsoring today's video. Regardless of whether you're prescribed to hustle culture or not, it's really important to protect your data and identity when you go online. NordVPN is a super easy VPN service to use. NordVPN has super fast servers. In fact, they have over 5,500 in 60 countries and you can have up to six simultaneous connections. They don't do any data logging and they have double data encryption for increased anonymity. And they've got some wonderful policies like a 30 day money back guarantee and 24 seven customer support. So make sure to go to nordvpm.com slash Mayuko or use code Mayuko to get a two year plan plus one additional month with a huge discount. Hey everyone, how's it going? My name is Mayuko and welcome back to my channel where we talk about tech, career and life. On another episode of Mayuko Talks About Stuff that's been on her mind for a while after working in tech, but didn't even really know how to talk about it or even what was really bothering her, but now it's really starting to pour out of her. We're gonna talk about my experience working in tech and content creation and its relation to hustle culture. Hustle culture and tech industry feel kind of synonymous to me. Like by working in tech, you are hustling. Also as a YouTuber, I feel like it's pretty common for there to be some sort of hustling element to it too. And when I mean hustling or hustling culture, I'm talking about overworking yourself for your job or making money, basically pushing yourself past your limits to reach this sort of capitalist utopia or evolved version of human that doesn't need to eat or sleep or something. And like me, Mayuko, at 28 years old, realized that I don't really prescribe to hustle culture. And let me tell you why. There was a time when I tried prescribing to hustle culture, especially when I was working at a startup. I had a daily three hour commute and I was trying to optimize all of my time at work and otherwise to not only get shit done, but I guess to hustle. But then like the panic attacks came. At first I thought it was just like one off instances of panic. But after months and years of therapy, I now realized that through the panic attacks, my brain was sending me warning signals and putting my brain into a state of just like, oh my gosh, I'm literally dying right now. Cause that's what panic attacks feel like. And I think it had a lot to do with the fact that I wasn't really truly taking care of myself. Like hustling to me means that you're ignoring some basic structures of balance between work and not work. And my panic attacks were a result of that balance being way off. AKA I was not only investing too much time, but also too much energy in my work. So yeah, now I can see that my own personal balance has to be much better than what I was doing. So I thought a lot about how I got there in adopting hustle culture and why it's so common and hyped up in the worlds that I was living in. Like what is hustle culture even for? It promises a sort of utopia that we're, I guess, trying to reach in which our whole self is defined by the work we do. And that's the mark we leave on this planet, not just for society, but for ourselves and our future generations. People also talk about getting out of the rat race, but like, is doing so actually gonna bring happiness? And to that I say, yeah, for some, probably. For some folks, hustle culture, whether they define it as that or not, is how they've oriented their whole life to be around slash about. When I tried to adopt hustle culture, I thought that by hustling, my life was more purposeful. It had like a framework to live by. And I also had like a reason to live and to go up and get out of bed every morning. But kind of like how I mentioned in my previous video, I feel like I then started to interpret it as, if I'm not hustling, then I'm without a defined reason and purpose to live. So I don't deserve to be happy or just to exist or achieve my dreams. Which that's some harmful self-talk, you know? I mean, being Japanese and American, I feel like I'm from two cultures that glamorize the f out of hustling and working hard. And from what I've seen from both cultures about hustling and working hard, it just felt like their definition of happiness or their life purpose didn't really align with mine. I just realized that it's just like not really what I aspire to or want to achieve, especially now that I'm older and know myself better now. To go deeper, I feel like part of hustle culture is to make yourself some sort of work machine. 
And in this effort to automate and optimize your life, there's this need to quantify results, like the need to literally measure everything. Everything from the amount of hours that you've worked, to the ounces of water you've had, to the amount of sleep you get a night. And I think that's because in order to optimize your life, you need to like measure the current state first, I guess. I see this stark parallel in the tech industry, where companies and tech people are constantly measuring things like, are we hitting our metrics? Did we accomplish enough story points this sprint? Is our product slash company growing quickly enough? How many people are using this feature and is it driving up engagement? Even in the content creation world, there's also this sense of needing to measure quantitative results to verify legitimacy. Did enough people watch my videos? Did enough people click through? Is that click through rate high enough? Do I have enough subscribers? I mean, measuring quantifiable results is great in that it helps to make sense of the ambiguity in a world where no one really knows what they're doing and we're all kind of making it up as we go. And make sure that we're headed towards the right direction, allows us to easily share context with others and gives us something to work towards. But in reflecting on all of this, I thought, will reaching some quantifiable goal really give me the life or career that I want? Because if I had to look back on my work as a software engineer and content creator, the stuff that I remember, the stuff that matters, the stuff that really made me feel glad about choosing this path is the qualitative stuff. Each individual story y'all send me about your life and what role my content has played. Every person I was able to meet and work with in the process of creating something. At the end of the day, when it comes to quantitative insights, I'm not going to ignore it completely. Being able to track data that way is a really useful tool in doing business in the 21st century. I mean, after all, I do need to keep tabs on whether people are actually using or watching my stuff. But if I had to balance out which side was more important to me, it would be the qualitative stuff. It's a work in progress as I challenge this position and notion that I've brought with me from the tech industry into my work as a content creator, but I'm constantly reminding myself that it's the qualitative stuff and that more isn't necessarily better. It's quality, it's thoughtfulness, it's intentionality that makes good And I don't know, I guess this position just feels very counterculture to hustle culture where a lot of it is about maxing ourselves out like machines? I said in my previous video that we as a whole human being are not just our work, and our worth isn't slash shouldn't be calculated by the things we create, because we all inherently deserve to exist and be happy regardless of those things. Instead, I'm choosing to look at my life based on a lot of things. Like, did I eat something good today? Did I rest well? Do I feel like I did good work today that moves me towards the future that I want? Did I give everything a solid try? Everybody's different. And I definitely acknowledge the huge amount of privilege I have in being able to live this way. And people will just choose to live however they want based on who they are and what their circumstances are. And that's fine, but this is who I am. And you know, I'm gonna live my life in a way that matters to me. Thanks all so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. First of all, make sure to pre-order your code hoodie. I hope you enjoyed them. This video was inspired by a conversation I had as a guest on a podcast called The Work Item. So I'll leave the full episode link in the description box down below. Make sure to subscribe for more musings about tech, career, and life from me. And I'll see you next time. Bye!